Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Blitzball Champ is back here yet again with another video here on the U to the Two. So, for this video, I just wanted to talk about a, a few things uh, Carolina Panthers related in this video. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the um, search for a new GM. Um, we got uh, Joe Brady that's going to be getting some interviews for a head coaching position. Um, and just, you know, kind of give my thoughts, you know, just a few, few grades on just how the team did this season overall. And yeah, just go from there. So um, let's jump right into this. So looking like uh a pretty deep list of candidates for general manager. So uh, just to recap, we let go of Marty Herney. And one of our main priorities right now is looking for a new general manager. So there's been some, some candidates that's been mentioned. So let me, let me pull some of this up. So so a list of candidates for uh, the GM job. We had uh, Adam Peters from the 49ers, Jeff Ireland from the Saints, Ryan Poles from the Chiefs, Brant Tillis from the Chiefs, uh, Kwesi Adolfo Mincha, please forgive me if I butcher that, from the Browns, um, Joe Scho Schoen from the Bills, um, Nick Caserio from the Patriots, who actually just been confirmed that he is going to be the Houston Texans GM. Yeah, Houston Texans GM. Um, we're also going to be also going to be interviewing uh, former Giants general manager Jerry Reese. And then there's some in-house candidates such as Pat Stewart, Samir Suleiman. Um, we also also going to be interviewing uh, Chicago's Champ Kelly and Tennessee's Monty Osenfort. Um, but yeah, so that's what they have listed so far via um, ESPN as a source for a list of GMs. But uh but yeah, we do know that uh the Texans will be getting um Nick Caserio as uh GM. So he's pretty much out of the out of the question. Um I don't really know a lot of these candidates. I know and I know Lewis Riddick was a name that was kind of thrown around uh lately. But I don't know a lot of these candidates, but it has been said that uh, candidates Champ Kelly and um, Monty Osenfort are from winning backgrounds. So, something to keep in mind. But it'll be interesting to see who we end up getting as a GM. Like I said, I don't know a lot of these guys, but um, what do you guys think about that list? Are there any names that that really stick out to you uh, that you would consider a good choice for GM? Because I think what's very important is you don't want to settle with a yes man kind of GM. Carolina really needs a GM that's going to be aggressive that's really going to work hard to really get exactly what we need going forward in order to put this help make this team into a dynasty and hopefully win Super Bowls uh, for years to come. So need a very, very knowledgeable, aggressive GM that I really believe is going to put his foot forward and really get what we need. So here's hoping that works out. Really, really hope that works out. Um, 
Now with Joe Brady, uh, our current offensive coordinator, Joe Brady, so he's been asked permission to be interviewed for a head coaching position for um, the Houston Texans, the Atlanta Falcons, and the Los Angeles Chargers, which, you know, Houston Texans, they let go of their coach um, a while back. Uh, way before the end of the season. Um, Atlanta did the same as well. As a matter of fact, Atlanta let go of their coach after their loss to the to the Panthers in Atlanta. So they let go of Dan Quinn. They have been going with interim uh, Raheem Morris the whole time. And then um, the Chargers let go of their uh, coach, at the end of the season, which I believe was Anthony Lynn, I believe. Or something like that. But that coach was let go. So they're going to be interviewing for coaches. Um, who knows? Maybe the Jets may eventually interview Joe Brady. Uh, they let go of Adam Gase. So they're, gonna, they're looking for a coach. So, I mean, yeah, uh, Doug Marone, he got let go from... Uh, Jacksonville, so they're going to be looking for a coach. So Joe Brady being looked at for a head coaching spot. I'll be honest with y'all. I don't think he's ready to be a head coach. I really don't think he's ready. Overall, looking back at this at this season, I mean, the offense, the Carolina Panthers offense was ranked 21 in the league. Was ranked 21. I mean, I would say that's definitely slightly below average. I mean, if I were to give Joe Brady a grade, just how I feel that he's done, if there was like a, a grade between a, a D, D plus and a C minus, that's where I would rank Joe Brady. An okay offensive coordinator, but honestly, what really disappointed me was just he really did not live up to a lot of the hype that was said about him making that transition from college to um, NFL after the job that he did with LSU as a as a passing passing coordinator. You know, he won the Boyles Award. And my my whole argument with that, because I know a lot of people are like, it's Joe Brady's first season, you know, give him time and this, that, and the other. But like I said, he was super hyped. Not only that, the type of personnel that he was getting, especially with Teddy Bridgewater, you know, this was supposed to be a group that knew the system that knew the system, familiar faces, and everything like that, and it was supposed to be easy, easy to click. And that did not turn out to be the case. And it's just, it, it, it just didn't look good. I know a lot of people want to say that, okay, we didn't have Christian McCaffrey throughout the season, I mean, we still had plenty of weapons on offense. That's really not an excuse. Because when you think about it, we had two wide receivers go over 1,000 yards receiving for the year in DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson. You had two other players that totaled 1,000 yards and 1,000 scrimmage yards in Curtis Samuel and Mike Davis. So, I mean, 
when it comes down to folks saying, you know, about who to blame, I feel like it should be a shared blame between the coaching staff and the players. And in this case, Joe Brady and Teddy Bridgewater, I feel like the blame is equal. In Teddy Bridgewater's case, I mean, we have to look at his at his career. Like this season, he had one more passing touchdown than previously than the previous two seasons. His first two seasons in Minnesota, he threw fourteen touchdowns. And this year, in this season, he only threw one more than before, up to now. You know, I'm not going to look at the seasons where he didn't play a lot of games or he was out hurt. But, I mean, that's three seasons right there. And the most he's gotten in a season is 15 passing touchdowns. I mean... It's not, it's not good. With the type of weapons this team has, it's just not a good look. Not only with that, when it comes to Joe Brady, there have been many, many key, crucial calls that Joe Brady just has made the wrong call, the wrong play call, and just has not done well to capitalize. Because that also equates to part of why Bridgewater is 0-8 in games where he's had to come from behind or, you know, final drive to, to score and win the game. 0-8. You know, some of that was just Teddy Bridgewater not being able to make the play or the throw necessary. And also, Brady just not putting together a good drive, a good game plan, a good drive plan with the play calling. I mean, the stats speak for stats speak for itself. You know, I mean, the team is ranked 28th in passing touchdowns. 25th and over, 25th overall in touchdowns. Uh, red zone touchdown percentage, 26. I mean, that's great that we've had four players over 1,000 yards, but when you're ranked that low in scoring touchdowns, that's... That's not good. That's 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 not good. I mean, stats is fine, but if you're not able to consistently get in the end zone, it's just not a good look. It's not a good look. So, I mean, just something to think about. Just something to really think about. But. You know, there's a chance that somebody somebody might take a chance on Joe Brady for head coach, but honestly, which if a team does grab Joe Brady to be their head coach, only thing I can say to y'all is good luck with that, because I honestly don't believe Joe Brady is ready. If anything, he needs to really do a better job as offensive coordinator, you know, I just I just don't think he's ready to be a head coach. He has not proven that he deserves to be a head coach. He hasn't. He hasn't. You know, if anything, you know, if Carolina does end up keeping Joe Brady and just nobody signs him. Going into next season, I really hope that Joe Brady will be more aggressive with the play calling and really utilize the weapons. I mean, 
He was able to in LSU. And, and like I said, coming into the NFL, had great weapons. It's not like he didn't lack weapons. Had good weapons. So that's not really an excuse. So... And another thing I'll just throw kind of throw out there, folks need to stop comparing all this to how Cam did in New England. For all for all those out there doing that, stop. So what if they finish seven and nine? They didn't make the playoffs either, so it's not really a valid argument. Not only that, he his stats were were less. He only threw for eight passing touchdowns. The only thing that he threw threw less or no. No, nah, he actually threw uh, more interceptions than uh, than Bridgewater. So I mean, yeah. So that's an irrelevant comparison. So stop. But I don't know. Do y'all think? Somebody's going to pick up Joe Brady as a head coach? Or do you think he'll still be in Carolina? I mean, like I said, offense was ranked 21. I mean, it's not. I wouldn't say that's good. But maybe slightly average or below average. I would say I would say below average if you if you ask me, but but yeah, but the candidates right now are looking like Houston, Atlanta, and uh, the L.A. Chargers. So we'll see how that goes. Um, another thing that was mentioned was Joey Sly got signed for uh, 2021. I know a lot of people don't like Sly, but just relax. This does not guarantee that he makes the roster for next season. He's signed for next season, but I imagine he's going to have some competition. But Sly finished making 29 of 36 field goals attempts and 33 of 36 extra points and finished second in the NFL in touchback percentage. So, I mean, I'll let y'all do the judging of that. But, but yeah, got to get a GM. Got to get uh, well, we'll have to see what happens with Joe Brady because I think if uh, somebody does pick up Joe Brady, then I think there's a rule where we get a comp uh, compensation draft, like third round or something like that. Somebody, somebody remind me how that works. But even if that does happen, then that means we'll have to look for a new offensive coordinator as well. So definitely keep an eye out on that. Have to see what goes goes with that. Um, and then looking at the defense, defense ranked eighteenth in the league. I'll say this. Defense really, really struggled early on, going into the middle of the, going into the middle of the season. But you know what? They really stepped it up last half of the season. Um, we're really getting pressures, you know, forcing some fumbles. Uh. They're ranked 29th in interceptions, so we, we really didn't have much for interceptions this season. 
Uh, I mean, we were ranked 31 in third down uh, conversion percentage, which that's a big, big part of where our defense struggled. I mean, just third third downs, we sucked when it came to third downs. But you know, for the most for the most part, you know, this this year, I would I would I think it's safe to say this season Carolina did a better job stopping the run overall. I think they did a better job stopping the run. Um, but you know what? They, they definitely, they definitely fixed some things. If I were to give them a grade, I'd give them, I'd probably give them a, a C minus. Maybe give or take a C. Because like I said, they 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 definitely showed that they can improve and be better and actually do some good things. Yeah, I think you you know you get a few more key pieces, maybe through the draft and through free agency for the defense. And I think maybe maybe next season. Or, you know, maybe in two seasons, Carolina defense can perhaps get back to the force they once were when it comes to defense. I definitely feel like there's there's hope for the defense. As far as Phil Snow, uh, I mean, I personally wanted him gone but who knows maybe maybe with this last surge of the season and whatnot maybe he did a maybe some would say he did enough to to keep his job i don't know i mean whether i can say the same about joe brady is kind of questionable but i don't know that's that's how i feel but um but yeah but that's pretty much all that I have. Um, I plan on doing a separate video, uh, giving my thoughts on on the draft. So um, definitely uh, keep an eye out for that. But let me know what y'all think. What do y'all think about the the candidates for general manager that I mentioned? Uh, for any of those that y'all know, who would y'all like to see as the new Carolina Panthers general manager? Also, Joe Brady. Do you believe another team is going to pick up Joe Brady? Or do you think he'll still be with Carolina? Um, but yeah, let me know what y'all think. Like, comment, subscribe, click that notification bell so you don't miss a video. And thank you so much for watching. This is Blitzball Champ Jason Ingram signing off. Hope everybody has a blessed week. See y'all soon.